Hi everyone, I am going to show you my uh, process for coating prints that I have printed on Goyu paper um, and uh, dipped in encaustic medium. Uh, there's uh, some of my previous videos, <laughs> you can find uh, what those, what some of those prints look like. And today I figured I'd set up and show you how I'm doing that. So this is my this is my encaustic medium in a pan that's big enough to dip these prints. I was going to go ahead and get them all ready and and do it, but I thought I'd show you uh, how I printed now. So this is the Goyu paper comes on oops comes on these large sheets. Um, this was this was the entire sheet right here, but what I did was I cut out uh, the size that would fit into my printer as a 19 by 13 inch piece, that, which is the same size as the presentation paper that I've been printing on for the encaustics that I have attached to the boards. This is um, an experiment that I sort of came up with when I was trying to embed <clears throat> the prints right in layers of wax. It, it really didn't work. The paper is translucent but it has too much texture in it to, to do that well and the surface wasn't turning out kind of glassy the way I like it on the boards but I ended up liking the texture just with the prints as themselves. Um, I have yet to figure out how I will matte and frame uh, them later on but I'm thinking probably shadow box style. But for right now I thought I'd show you the paper. So this is Goyu paper which according to my research is made from, uh, I think it says Kozo fiber and sulfite. Now the sulfite part I don't know. The Kozo appears to be some sort of um, some sort of botanical and let me see, I don't know if I can show you but it's just, you know, it's a nicely textured paper. I like to um, tear the edges when I'm taking it off of, uh, out of the uh, the, the extra paper because it gives it a, a nice, a really nice textured edge that kind of hangs on to to some of the wax. Um, so I cut that, that can go at that size can go directly into my printer no problem. It has enough heft to it even though it is you know kind of uh, more translucent than regular paper. Uh, but it, it has enough heft to it that if, if it's cut to the right size, it, it will feed through the printer just fine. If it's a smaller one, if say I'm doing uh, a 6x6, six six, I will cut out a little bit of extra and tape it to a piece of presentation paper and feed it through the printer that way. So, so these are the two that I'm going to dip today. First, I'm going to finish uh, tearing off the edges. I just, it's, it's no, it's not brain surgery. I just um, go ahead and make a crease and then and tear as, as if you would tear paper. You, you do have to do it a little bit carefully because you might, it, it could tear off into the, into the picture, but it's, it's really not that hard to, uh, to work out. So I'm going to do that and get these ready and then come back and just show you how I dip them in the wax. I've already dipped one of the prints and again I will show you like I've shown with some of the others. You can see the difference when just holding it up either with uh, nothing behind it or with the light behind it and then with um, a white uh, surface underneath which is what really makes the the colors and the print pop and as it sets and hardens after it's been dipped it, it becomes um, 
m more uh, translucent, or the, the wax does right when you dip it, there might be some cloudiness. But So that's the first one. You can see how the edges get. Um, this is still a process that I'm uh, experimenting with. So <laughs> in doing this one, I realized just how awkward I am at it. And it takes, it takes, well, I'll dip the print a number of times. I'll pull it out. I'll let the, the wax sheet off of it. And then if I'm not liking the way some of the edges are, I'll put it back in and let it melt a little bit more. So for me, it's, it's kind of a process of um, a little bit of trial and error and just doing it to the point where I feel um, I've gotten the print where I like it. So I'm going to put you on to the tripod here and I will start by, well, I'll start by dipping this fellow. I got these little guys. I'm still experimenting, trying to find the right tools to put it in and out of the wax because I really can't put my bare hands in there. I was thinking if I could find little little um, silicone finger covers that actually might be perfect but I don't have those yet so I'm going to go ahead and just let this set in the bottom. If you have a larger print um, depending on what size you're doing you can sort of feed it through, sheet it through uh, from one end and then pull it out the other and let the wax sheet off. But these actually, these are um, eight by, I printed these eight by eight so they just fit right in there. So then I'll take it out. It's too hot to touch for about a minute or so, maybe 60 seconds. It, it actually cools enough to, to touch the surface within, within a minute. But you have to hold it kind of gingerly just because um, because it is still hot. So that's one dip. It's not looking too bad. Um, when I take the one section off here where I held it with the tongs, I can see that it's got some stuff that I don't like there, so I'm going to put it in again. And sometimes I, I put it in and I will pull it out and let the wax sheet in one direction and then the next time I'll take it out from the other corner and I'll let it sheet in the other direction and like I say I'm not I'm not an expert at this technique yet um, so I do a lot of experimenting to see what ends up working for me and how I like it. Uh, I wanted to mention that when I was first getting interested in using encaustics with my photographic work, I thought it was going to be like way too expensive. Um, I saw that the, the palettes could cost, you know, a couple hundred, three hundred dollars. It just seemed beyond my budget. And then I went to a class at the Visual Arts Center here in Richmond and a wonderful teacher, Linda Ray, and I found out, you know what, I can do this like way cheaper than I thought. <laughs> um, you know, these, these Oster griddles don't cost very much at all. They cost, oh, how much did I pay for it? Like um, $30 or so. You know, a little fan doesn't cost too much. You can get um, the pans, you know, just go to like Target. And uh, as long as I'm figuring, I mean, I wouldn't get anything that as like a, what do you call it, a um, non-stick, any other weird kind of surface stuff. So now I've taken that off. I can touch it a little bit. I'm thinking that I like it as it is right now. So that was about two or three dips, and I will show you here. Um, so here we go with this one. It's still a little cloudy. It's going to, uh, it will um, harden up. We've got the, the fibers at the edge that, that hold the wax nicely. 
I just really, I really enjoy the technique. It's a little bit, you know, there are aberrations. It's not, it's not perfect. It's, it's certainly not um, a technique that you probably would want to use if you're like, do you see me okay? Um, if you're like really into uh, finely detailed perfection, but I don't, I, that's not what any of my work is like really. My work is about the, uh, is about the, the flaws <laughs> that make it interesting. But yeah, so I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with this. I think it's, it's a really interesting way to, to deal with uh, photographic prints. And clearly you could use this for any kind of photograph that you want. Um, these are photos that were taken on film with my Holga camera, my toy camera. But you, know, you could use it for digital photos, any kind of photo that you want that you print through your printer. Um, what kind of printer did I get there? Uh, it's an Epson something like Arista or something like that. I don't know. Um, but it's got, it's one of the newer printers. Uh, as long as you have anything that, a, a printer that has decent quality inks or dyes in it. Um, still trying to figure out how I want to um, mat these. I, I don't really want to mat them because I want to keep the keep the edges so they would probably need some kind of float in a um, in a, a shadow box kind of frame but anyway so there you go there's um, how I coat my prints that are made on Goyu paper in the encaustic medium again I, I think it's a really it's a really fun easy kind of technique unique print that you know kind of goes beyond what a normal photo looks like yeah so that's it I hope that's uh, useful or helpful or interesting to y'all all right bye